Hey, welcome to part two of my series looking at Carl Bau's creation in the 21st century. Uh, this particular episode is called Evolution Expelled and features Dr. Joseph Mastropalo. Um, before I start, I do want to apologize for the length of time that it's been taking me to get these out. Um, literally, no exaggeration here. Uh, part one uh, took me, oh, I filmed that over a seven week period. No, no, no lie. Seven week period from the time I started that one until the time I started this one has been seven weeks. Um, it's just, I'm simply really not, I don't have a lot of free time. All right, we ended the part, we ended part one. Uh, he was talking about the, trying to connect the theory of evolution, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, specifically to ancient Greek philosophy, especially the worship of the goddess Gia. Okay. Um, now, again, this is a complete failure. This is a complete waste of, uh, it's, it's amazing. But I'm going to continue on. And they gave all the credit to Gia, which was the personification of the Mother Earth, yes, which all gave the, the vitalism. Energy and vitalism. Gave all the vitalism which spontaneously generated and evolved these organisms. So that then is Darwin's goddess. I know that you know of the book that was recently published, Darwin's God. There is no Darwin's God. That's correct. There is only Darwin's goddess, and it's Gia. Yes. Now... That's right. Belief in a life force of, of Earth producing things through spontaneous generation is a whole lot like the principle of natural selection that Darwin suggested, right? They're practically identical concepts, except, well, they're not. No Gia, no spontaneous generation, no evolution. And the archetype scientist, Francesco Reddy, who used a fine microscope for his studies. And he was the one that said... It is vain to believe unless confirmed by experiment. Yes, yes. But that's the beginning of science. So isn't that interesting? So uh, Joseph Mastropalo and apparently uh, Carl Bau both hold Francesco Reedy up as a as a, the pinnacle of what we all should strive to be as as intelligent people, right? That that it's that it having belief without actual physical experimentation, without physical evidence to support your belief, is just a ridiculous position to hold. Now, this is why, of course, uh, fundamentalist Christians, biblical literalists, young earth creationists, as we all know, regularly perform detailed experiments proving, you know, the resurrection of Christ and all, all other other such things, um, because they only believe it because of the actual physical experimental data that they, they accumulate, right? None of it's based on just belief. So actually, he expelled evolution from its posture as factual observation. He expelled evolution. He did. I find it fascinating uh, that Francesco Reedy uh, was able to expel evolution from its, you know, its, its, the, its, the pedestal that it was on at the time when he published um, you know, only 190 years before Origin of Species. It's pretty neat that he was able to actually topple something 190 years before it actually had any, you know, a single bit of experimental data to support it. Now, here what we have is the inventor of evolution, which yes, was Anaximander. An and he said the Earth started lifeless. It spontaneously generated through Gia. And here's what he said. At first, the Earth was a molten primeval planet. You'll find that in present-day biology yes. textbooks yes. in the, it's central. The, the chapters on evolution. Okay, now that explains a lot because when I first, uh, when I took my first science class, one of the, one of the things that they emphasized with us is that right below the Earth's crust, uh, there was a layer uh, called the underworld. And above us in the atmosphere, there was a firmament with the stars embedded in it. And above that, of course, the ocean of heaven and the heaven of heavens. Um, now, all of this is taught in modern, uh, modern biology. It's part of the modern evolutionary theory. That expansion was based on plagiarized drawings, which were subsequently doctored or yes. modified. Fabricated. To make, they were fabricated to make it look like there was an evolutionary sequence. It was a complete fraud. In fact, Ernst Hegel by his own university was brought before trial and, and was uh, expelled, uh, condemned. Found guilty. Found guilty. Without, without a, a doubt. Oh shit, not this again. 
Now, I, I already did in, in another video series explained why those, that famous picture they show of the line of embryos uh, attributed to Ernst Haeckel are not the embryo frauds that he was accused of, of. Those were not the pictures that he was accused of being a fraud over. Those are the ones that he's legitimately those are those show legitimate embryos. The ones that were specifically he was accused of fraud was a single woodcut showing a very early stage where he used the same woodcut with slight modifications and claimed it was from a chicken, a dog, and a turtle or something like that. Okay, that was the one he was accused of fraud over. He removed it from the first edition of his of a book. It was a popular science book, by the way, um, and that was that. He would never plagiarized that picture that this shows right there was adapted from his teacher, his professor, with permission, Von Baer, okay? He didn't plagiarize those drawings. Um, it, this accusation of fraud is a, is a load of crap, okay? It's simply, um, it's something that, that they make. And this is the thing, Carl Bauer jumps in with this same garbage that he was, that he was as if he was tried and convicted, okay? That's, that's bullshit. That is some, a simply false assertion. The only thing that happened was, one, of the one of the people, a very critical reviewer of the first edition of his book, uh, Anthropology, uh, Anth- whatever I don't know the pronunciation of it, the first the person reviewed it, noticed that the that one embryo drawing reproduced three times, not the one shown here, was the same picture because um, it had some of the same detail, like some of the same little nicks and things in it in the in the plate, um, that that was fraudulent, called foul on it, Haeckel apologized, said that he wasn't th- thinking clearly, he was sort of in a hurry, um, and changed it in subsequent editions. Okay? He was never brought up any charges, he was never censored by his university, he was never held before a, a jury of his peers and, and convicted of anything. Okay? Carl Bau is a liar. Soma, which means body seeds, changed by the environment, they're inherited in our evolution's mechanism, and that means that if I, as a parent, lost a finger, then the subsequent children would be uh, born without that finger. And of course, that's been false, known to be false for thousands of Absolutely. years. Absolutely. So it, it has been expelled, yet the concept has held on because of its naturalistic explanation. You know, these guys have absolutely no shame whatsoever. Uh, I would love to see a single example of where Lamarckism is being proposed in a modern evolutionary concept anywhere. Show it to me. Show me where this idea that that offspring inherit physical disfigurements from their parents, not genetic. This is not genetics. Now, this is this is a separate thing from genetics. That that offspring inherit um, either, you know, if their parents work out, they get their children are born naturally stronger. Um, if the parent loses a finger, the child will be born without a finger. Show me where this has any 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 meaning in a modern concept of evolution um it's just a lie okay they're bringing up again it's this, it's the idea they're trying to tie they 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 can't actually find a flaw with a legitimate understanding of the theory of evolution so they have to go cherry pick through history looking for these ridiculous old discarded concepts that they can poke fun at and say well that's just like the modern one um that's what they're doing here they're a bunch of liars and they're shameless you know, you know what we should do? We should look in the biology textbooks. Because if you do, in the chapters on evolution, you will not find one footnote to a science journal. Now that's astounding. You know, you and I, Joseph, you and I publish. And we are required by peer review and by uh, journalistic honesty to document. Uh, I've published books, you've published books. You and I have hundreds of documentary references in our books. We're required to do so to go back to the source. Yet, in the very textbooks, are you saying, in the very textbooks that our children use as foundationary for the principal decisions of uh, life origins, there are no technical references? None whatsoever. And if you look in the back of the book for the list of references, there are none. Okay, now that clip, I'm going to tell you, now that, that... Is a is a triple face palmer. Um, that clip convinced me that on the Carl Bow show, as soon as the cameras stop and the and the director goes, "Okay, cut," that's a wrap or whatever they say at the end of it. Carl Bow sits down with his guest in a big chair, and the hookers and the blow all come out. 
and they like laugh and they like they exchange little funny stories, you know, like, oh man, I can't believe it when you said that. I almost lost it. <clears throat> it was really hard to stay serious when you were, you know, talking that crap. Oh man, these suckers are just going to be donating like crazy now. You know, they're just that that there's something that they can sit there and make the claim that biology textbooks, that science textbooks about evolution, never contain a single reference. Never contain a single footnote. Never actually source their material. But creationist literature, by by the laws of peer review, or the rules of peer review, are forced to document every single claim they make. So, of course, it's the scientists. It's us scientists out there just making naked, bald assertions with no support whatsoever, while these dedicated, hardworking creationists and apologists are always forced to to verify every word they say, right? To say that, takes balls the size of something. I don't know. It's, it's amazing to me. Um, it's, it's, it's disgusting. Uh, I don't know. It, 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 it's mind-boggling. I mean, we're talking about a guy who just claimed that, you know, landmarkism is still in textbooks today, or whatever the fuck he said. Um, then can turn around and say, but we, we're holding such strict academic standards, and they're not. Liar. Doing well, it. I wanted well. to show here that there are consequences, academic consequences, immediately that are taking place between fourth and twelfth grade. Science achievement is suppressed 50 percent, and that's because the students have been told that the universe is the complete reverse of what it actually is in class. But when they go out of class, they are bound to see that what they've been taught is a complete fabrication. So within so, their minds, there's a frustrative attitude, and, and and yet and and a negative response to scientific things because they can't believe what's called science. They lose confidence in their science yes. teachers, and they lose confidence in the whole subject of science, and the result is this decline in their scientific achievement. Wow, so much bullshit to cover here. Uh, first of all, I went and found that document that he cites from there with these statistics, the one that claims that there's about a 50 to 40 percent loss in math and science uh, between the between fourth grade and 12th grade, meaning that students have a certain level of aptitude that they then lose significantly by 12th grade. Um, and that document, which I will put a link down below, um, says nothing of the sort. It's simply not in that document at all. That graph's not in that document. There are a few other graphs uh, that illustrate some different points. But that information isn't in the document that he cites here. So I'd like to know where you got it from. Uh, That's point number one. Now, the closest I could find in that document is if if you look at this, it has a scored aptitudes from 4th, 8th, and 12th grades um, in math and science. I'm assuming that's kind of where you're drawing from. But on, in that category, it shows that fourth graders in science have a 67% above basic level, um, and by 12th grade have a 57%, so a 10% drop in aptitude in science between fourth and um, 12th grade, and a actually, what is it here, 64% in math that goes up to 69 <coughs> in uh, 12th grade. So they actually improve in math. So your 40% and 50% numbers are just pulled out of your ass like, well, just about everything you said here in this entire this, this video so far. Um, and the second thing I want to bring up, though, is then you take your made-up data. You know, I can make, I can make uh, Excel graphs, too. You know, it's pretty easy to do. Um, and, but you make up this Excel data, you make up this graph, you present this graph, and then you use that to draw a conclusion that somehow the teaching of evolution is responsible, which, by the way, that conclusion isn't in that document either. Nothing of the sort is said in that document about it. It talks about economics. It talks about teacher salaries. It talks about overcrowding in schools. It talks about a number of other f- factors. The teaching of evolution isn't brought up. Now, the t- proof of this pudding is that we cannot graduate scientists into public life where they can become employed as scientists. You heard him, science majors. Drop the fuck out of school now because there's nothing out there for us. Daddy Deeds! Done with shit! 